evening. My name is Mark Syme, the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ. I'd like to welcome you to the evening services of our church for uh, Sunday, November the 10th. We will sing several songs. We will observe the Lord's Supper, and I have a message that I hope will be uh, enlightening to all of us. Here at Northfield, we sing from the song book, Songs of Faith and Praise. Uh, I will give you the number and the name of the song, just in case you don't have that book, and you can either Google it or use the book that you have. So, uh, first we will start with number 67. 67, for the beauty of the earth. 67, for the beauty of the earth. <clears throat> For the beauty of the earth, for the beauty of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to thee we raise, this our sacrifice of praise for the beauty of each hour of the day and of the night hill and vale and tree and flower sun and moon and stars of light Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise for Thy church that evermore lifteth holy hands above, offering upon every shore her pure sacrifice of love. Lord of all, to Thee we raise this our sacrifice of praise. We'll sing number 202. 202. Joyful, joyful, we adore Thee. 202. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee, God of glory, Lord of love. Hearts unfold like flowers before the opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness, drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness, fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround the earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around the center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Chanting bird and flowing fountain, call us to rejoice in Thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ our Brother, all who live in love are Thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals join the mighty chorus which the morning stars began. 
Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds man to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. Joyful music leads us onward in the triumph song of life. Before we partake of the Lord's Supper, we will sing number 315, When I Survey the Wondrous Cross. Three fifteen. When I survey the wondrous cross, verses one, two, and three. One, two, and three. When I survey the wondrous cross, on which the Prince of Glory died. On my riches gain, I count but loss, and borgon tempt on all my pride. Forbid it, Lord, that I should boast, save in the death of Christ my Lord. All the vain things that charm me most, I sacrifice them to His blood. See from His head his hands, his feet, sorrow and love flow mingled down. Did there such love and sorrow meet, or though it's composed so First day of the week, we are instructed uh, to gather together and break bread. Um, uh, Jesus instituted this supper that we call communion, that we call uh, the Lord's Supper, on the night in which he was betrayed when he met with his disciples in the upper room. He explained about his body. He explained about his blood. Uh, he compared his body to the bread. He compared his blood to the fruit of the vine. And he told his disciples, and ergo he told us, that on every first day of the week, as it talks about in Acts chapter 20, verse 7, that we would remember his death on the cross. And so as we uh, contemplate that at this time, understanding that we are doing the will of God, that uh, we should remember his son every first day of the week and the sacrifice that he made for each one of us. Let's pray for the bread. Our Lord and Savior, we thank you so much for your divine wisdom and at just the right time sending Jesus to us. We knew, we know from reading the scriptures that he was destined to sacrifice himself, to start a new covenant, a new covenant based not on the sacrifice of animals, but the sacrifice of your son as the son of man and the son of God. Bless us as we partake of this bread. Help us to bring to our memory him hanging on the cross. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. When we partake of the fruit of the vine, we are to remember his blood.
Let's pray. We're so grateful that Jesus was willing to shed his blood for us, that innocent blood. And we understand that it is the blood of our salvation, that it is the blood that is the basis for your grace that is upon us. It is that blood that washes away our sins. As we partake, let's remember how important that sacrifice was and how important the blood that he shed was. We ask this in his most holy name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper being completed, we're also told on the first day of the week, we are to give back as we have prospered. Uh, we have prospered so bountifully, and we come to understand that all that we have is the Lord's, and we give the Lord his own. And as we give, help us to give with a, a cheerful heart, because we're told that the Lord does indeed love a cheerful giver. Help those things to be on our mind as we give back to the Lord. Let's pray. Help us, dear Heavenly Father, to realize that to spread your word and to help those that are in need. We need funds. Those should come from those members of each individual church so that we might do your will here on earth as the kingdom of God here on earth. Bless us as we give. Help us to do so with an open heart. Help us to do so cheerfully giving you what is your own. We pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. The last song we will sing is number 103, He Has Made Me Glad. Lively song. We'll sing it through twice. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gaze with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. That concludes the song and singing part of our service. I know the Lord was praised in our, our song, and I just hope that uh, all of you were lifted up uh, through singing praises to the Lord. This evening, I would like to talk about joy, favorite subject of mine. All of this is coming from my favorite book, the book of Philippians. Um, I have uh, in my daily devotional, uh, that I send out five days a week. Uh, most of my uh, lessons and devotionals have been from the book of Philippians. And so this is kind of a carryover of that. You know, life certainly has its ups and downs, doesn't it? Circumstances can cause us to be happy. Circumstances can cause us to be sad. Ups and downs of life, even the circumstances around us very often determine if we're happy or sad. However, when we have the joy of the Lord, whether we are happy or whether we are sad, we have joy. The word happy comes from the term happenstance, which means circumstances. 
And joy, on the other hand, is a innate and deep satisfaction that we have in our hearts. And the book of Philippians, as I've mentioned already, to me is a book of joy. And it tells us uh, that we can have joy even when our circumstances are not the best. Uh, we can just even follow the life of the Apostle Paul, who had been arrested in Jer Jerusalem because the Jews hated him so much. The Roman rulers felt obligated to the Jews, uh, so they kept Paul in prison in Caesarea for two years. Paul saw a chance, and um, he realized that uh, even though the rulers understood that Paul had done nothing worthy of imprisonment or death, um, he finally said, I'm a Roman citizen. Uh, I want to be judged in Rome. And so they carried uh, Paul off to Rome. There he was under house arrest for two years. And uh, with that, uh, and with the mistreatment that he felt that he had gone through, he still maintained an attitude of joy. And by studying the book of Philippians, we can see how he was able to maintain that joy. Remember, Paul didn't go into the corner in jail and say, woe is me. He wrote this wonderful book to the church at Philippi. And so I maintain first that we can have joy. And, and Paul had joy because he had a fellowship with God. In the first two verses, uh, verses one and two, he mentioned those blessings. And he said that those blessings were in Christ. And so those blessings were uh, manifold in several ways. They were manifold in encouragement. They were manifold in the consolation of love. They were manifested in the fellowship with the Spirit. They were manifested in affection and finally, they were manifested in compassion. Every person, I believe, on earth craves for those blessings. And Paul entered into the fellowship of Christ when he was baptized into Christ. Acts chapter 22, verse 16. When we enter Christ, we also begin our walk of fellowship with Christ. And in Philippians 3.10, it says he wanted to know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings being conformed to his death. Second, I would maintain that he had joy because he was where unity is found. You know, we live in a divided society, don't we? We just went through an election. We have a polarized nation. Some voted for certain people, some voted for other people. Those that voted for the person who got elected uh, felt happy. Those that uh, voted for the other person did not feel so happy. Think of the great political division that we have in our country. And Paul wrote that the church which had division in it was something that he was not satisfied with. And so in Philippians 2.2, 2, he said, make my joy complete. Now get this, by being of the same mind, maintaining the same love, united in spirit, intent on one purpose. Folks, that describes one word. That describes unity. And he furthermore emphasized this in Galatians chapter 3, verse 27, when he said, For all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourself with Christ. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's neither slave nor free. There's neither male or female. Ready for this? For you are all one in Jesus Christ. Third, I believe that Paul had joy because he put others above himself. Some of the most miserable people, I believe, in the world. And all of those that are associated with them 
are those who think the whole world and all of their associates are there for their own benefit. That the world revolves around me. That we have to always watch out for number one. And Paul answered that too in chapter two, verses three and four, when he said, do nothing from selfish or empty conceit, but with humility of mind, regard one another as more important than yourselves. Do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. <coughs> Fourth, I believe <coughs> they had joy because he understood, <coughs> and I've been talking about this in my devotionals for the past couple of days, he understood where his real citizenship was. Paul was a Jew, and so he had earthly citizenship. If we are from the United States, we have earthly citizenship in this country. And you know what? Living in the United States of America gives us certain blessings. The election that we just had showed those blessings where we get to choose our leaders. However, he realized that he was just passing through. He realized that his citizenship on earth was a temporary citizenship. How do I know that? Philippians 3 verse 20 and 21 says, our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform the body of our human state in conformity with the body of his glory. And you know what? Paul was torn. He lived a rough life. He physically suffered a lot. He emotionally suffered a lot. And so he said, I am pressed hard from both directions, having the desire to depart and be with Christ for that is very much better. Yet I remain in the flesh. It is more necessary for your sake. Paul was thinking about others, Philippians 1, 23 and 24. And so he gave up perhaps what he would rather do in order to do the Lord's will and what was the best for everybody else. Fifth, and this is very, very important to me, you may notice if you read my devotionals that I finish with Philippians chapter four, verse 11. He had joy because he had found contentment. As he closed out the book, he thanked them for the money that they had sent. And then there's that thank you and there's that wonderful word that he spoke about contentment to the church at Philippi and thus to you and I. Not that I speak from want, for I have learned to be content in whatever circumstances I am. I know how to get along with humble means. I also know how to live in prosperity. In any and every circumstance, I have learned the secret of being filled and going hungry, both having abundant and suffering need. And then he finishes that in verse 13, and he sums it up with that powerful verse, Philippians 4.13, where he says, I can do everything through Christ who strengthens me. Sixth on my list of why Paul had joy is that he had an active prayer life. He began the book in Philippians 1, starting in 3 and 4. He said, I thank my God. That's prayer. I thank my God in all my remembrance of you, always offering prayer with joy in my every prayer for you. He offered prayer with joy. Uh, we understand that, that our prayers should have joy in them. Um, we pray for folks. We pray that, that God may bring them joy. And he exhorted them in Philippians chapter four, verses six and seven, two other of my favorite verses, where he said, be anxious for nothing 
but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known in God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Jesus Christ. And finally, last on my list, and I think this is important too, he found joy because he was appreciative of what God had done for him. We should grow appreciative of what God has done for us, and therefore we should do good for others. You know what? It's so easy to fall into that trap of thinking that all that we have done is based on what we have done. We did it. We had no help with it. To tell you the truth, we have what we have because God has blessed us. The church at Philippi sent money to enable him uh, to meet his needs. And again, they sent money to him. And he closed this letter by saying, but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at last you have received your concern, you have revived your concern for me. Indeed, you were concerned before, but you lacked opportunity. Nevertheless, you have done well to share with me in my affliction. You yourself also know, Philippians, that the first preaching of the gospel, after I left Macedonia, no church shared with me in the manner of giving and receiving, but you, you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more than once for my needs. But I have received everything in full, and I have an abundance. I am amply supplied, having received from Epaphroditus what you sent, a fragrant aroma, an acceptable sacrifice, well-pleasing to God. Chapter 4, verse 10, and 14 to 18. He was so thankful for the financial support that he had received. But more than likely, there were others that helped in other ways. We can have a joy in being appreciative for all that others have done for making us the person that we are. And to me, that, that there's so much importance that's tied into that. As we close, you know, there is a lot of heartache in the world. We have the death of friends. We have the death of relatives. However, we ought to learn to have joy by the truths that we learn in the Lord's word. And to be specific this evening, the words that we find here in the book of Philippians. I pray that uh, our lives would express joy in our hearts so that others will want what we have. They don't want to be sad and weepy they want to be joyful. And if we express that joy in our life, they will know and they will want what we have. And we have the opportunity to share that with them. I am joyful because I have Jesus Christ in my life. This is where my joy is found. And when we can share that with others, their lives can be changed just like our lives have changed when we came to Jesus Christ. And they can live with joy in their lives, no matter what circumstances they are in. I hope these thoughts have lifted us up just a little bit and that we just think for a few moments of learning how to have real joy. That joy is in Jesus Christ. That joy is in being one of God's children. And so if you're not a child of God this evening, we offer you that invitation. We offer you that invitation. And part of the reason is wrapped up in my title so that we can learn to have real joy. There's joy in being in the Lord. 
the scriptures point out very, very succinctly how this happens. The word of God is to be read and believed. And then we are to take that word of God and say, my life isn't what it ought to be. I need to get rid of the baggage that I have. That's called repentance. And then we need to confess Jesus as the son of the living God and finally be baptized for the remission of our sins. If you need to come to the Lord this evening, those are the steps that you must take. If you need this immediately, get in touch with one of us. We will surely be at your beck and call. Let's all pray as we close. Our dear, dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we're just so grateful that we can have the joy of the Lord in our hearts. Bless us, dear God, as we walk through this earth to reflect the things that we have because we are children of God, to reflect on the joy that we can have, to reflect on the joy that the Apostle Paul here in the book of Philippians told us about. Joy is such a wonderful thing to have in our hearts. It lifts us up in circumstances that we wouldn't think we could be lifted up because the joy of the Lord is indeed our strength. Continue to be with us uh, through our lives. Be with us this evening. Help us to understand that your comfort in our lives can bring us true joy. Continue to be with us and comfort us and bless us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe and may God bless you all. Oh, worship the King, all glorious above, and gratefully sing His wonderful love. Our shield and defender, the Ancient of Days, pavilion in splendor and girded with praise. Thy bountiful Yeah.